have a couple developers here with us today, Greg and Steven. Um, we're going to show off a new feature called webhooks. And first, I'll give a brief introduction to what webhooks are, um, and then we'll go into two demos of how this feature works within Rendex. As most of you probably know, right, a webhook is a, a reverse API. Um, you just register a URL uh, within the application Rendeck, and your external app can then post data into Rendeck, and we can set it up so that in response to the data being posted, a job can be executed. So the first example that we're going to show is a event response. Um, so we have a website uh, where there's a reseller who, that allows vendors to um, create their own pages about their project product and product descriptions. As the user clicks through the website, if one of those detailed descriptions is missing, they're going to get a 404 error. Using webhooks, the company is able to deploy the missing page when the error occurs. So we'll have an event, um, the web app will then post to Rendeck, and in response, it will run a job that automatically generates and publishes the page. So giving our demo today is Steven. Um, he's going to go ahead and share out his, his desktop. And the webhook feature, as he's showing it, is available in the community as well as the enterprise version. So Steven, go ahead and share. Okay, so uh, this demo is designed to show you how you might use the new Rundeck webhook feature to enhance the quality of your product without also introducing a, a great amount of complexity in your product itself. So let's say you work at a fictitious company called Express Widgets. The company hosts an online storefront where widget vendors can sell their products. Express Widgets doesn't create the products, they just provide the storefront where the buyers and the sellers can connect. So one of the distinctives of your app that the vendors just love is that you allow the vendors to supply a detailed view of the product that's being sold. This allows the vendor to have the total presentation uh, of the final product uh, that they're selling. Uh, you have this uh, summary view here, which kind of lists all the products, but if you drill into the details, uh, then you actually get to see the page that the vendor came up with to um, entice you to buy their product. Now, while these vendors are great at making widgets, they're not always great at making web pages. So you have uh, different vendors supplying different pages, and then all of a sudden you come to one as a user, and boom, you get a 404. Um, a lot of times when you get a 404, uh, that means somebody's going to have to go and uh, find out exactly what's missing, what happened. Uh, sometimes you might get an automated uh, log somewhere that sends it to the right person somewhere, but even at that point, they're still probably having to go do some kind of a manual process to uh, try to go look for the right person to uh, get this 404 fixed. Uh, so what we saw in um, Express Widget Storefront is the user got a 404, which is not ideal, but uh, we told them, hey, wait just a second, let's look for that. And uh, within a very reasonable amount of time, we were able to uh, post a page that is functional for uh, the vendor uh, detail. Uh, now, how did we do that? Well, we used the new uh, feature in Rundeck called Webhooks. Uh, Express Widgets uses Rundeck to manage uh, different processes. Uh, but they have one that's a remediation process. So if a user on the website receives a 404, they have a job that's all uh, ready to uh, res respond to that. But the way they hook that up is with webhooks. So each project can have a series of webhooks. And in this project, we have a webhook that has a URL so you can post to as a name. Uh, you can set these webhooks to run as a, a certain user with certain roles and the webhooks are pluginable so if you don't find a webhook plugin that works for you you could write one uh, but 
right now we have a couple of default ones. One is just going to log. And then the next one will actually run a job based on a webhook post. So you will select this, make sure it's enabled, and then you'll choose the job that you want to run. Then you can go and you can, from the payload the webhook receives, pull out different pieces of data to uh, pass on to your job. So in this case, uh, to supply a reasonable default, we need things like the product ID, the product name, product price, and those will go into generating this uh, page. And so what the job did when the webhook fired was it took a template, it supplied all of these pieces of data into it, and then it wrote the file in the correct location so that um, the user served with a vendor page. Now what Rundeck also did was it went and sent an email to the product manager and said, hey, you need to go check this out, go contact this vendor, make sure they get their uh, page put in the right place so next time this doesn't happen. But for now, they're just gonna be served with this uh, default page. So as you saw, all of this ha can happen very quickly. Uh, Rundeck picks, it, picks up the webhook and starts reacting to it immediately. Here you see it in your activity, just like you would normally expect, so you can tell um, what run and what ran and when we we had uh, one question which version of rendec is the web hooks being introduced into so when can they get it so you can get it right now the version it came in is 311 i believe um, you do have to go and enable it yourself right now uh, it's it's a beta incubator type feature so um, in the documentation for webhooks, it'll go and tell you how to enable that. But once you've enabled it, um, you should see this webhooks sidebar appear in your projects. Thanks. The next demo that we're going to go into is actually going to show the enterprise version of webhooks, where you can do um, a little bit more using rule sets. So for this demo, what we're going to show is incident response. Um, there's a PagerDuty event alert that's set up. Um, PagerDuty is actually going to send that information to Rendec. Um, it's going to be about a specific environment. And Rendec is going to be able to kick off some jobs based on the event. Um, and directly within PagerDuty, the user is able to select actions um, that are going to execute additional jobs on Rendec. And for this demo, we have Greg. Um, so Greg worked on this feature. He's going to go ahead and show us how we could uh, set this up within with uh, PagerDuty and Rendec. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to take us through uh, an end-to-end -end example, and then we'll dive into the webhook setup to show how it's all wired underneath the covers. Um, on the left here, uh, we have a PagerDuty service setup called Zingbats. Um, and then on the right, we have a Rundeck project um, called Zingbats Logistics Runbook, which has a number of uh, jobs for managing a, a mock web application. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fire off uh, a job that's going to simulate uh, an incident or a failure. That's going to open an incident inside of PagerDuty, and then PagerDuty is going to send a webhook back, uh, which it already has to run deck, uh, and it's going to start gathering um, some information from the environment. Uh, when run deck started this job, it also posted a note back to the PagerDuty incident saying that it's running that job to collect the information um, and also posted a link um, to the, the running executions log so you can from PagerDuty go back and take a look at what the job's doing in the log output. Uh, so this is showing uh, two-way communication from PagerDuty um, to Rundeck and Rundeck to PagerDuty. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at a custom incident or I'm um, sorry, a custom PagerD action, uh, which is going to also send the webhook to run deck uh, so that we can see how this is uh, configured under the covers. Um, with the enterprise advanced run job plugin for webhooks, uh, we have the ability to set up multiple rules on an endpoint that each event coming through will get matched against um, in the conditions. And if the conditions match according to the policy of any or all, uh, then the event will trigger uh, the job that's been selected. Um, so with this, we can use a single endpoint um, and route 
the events to different run deck jobs based on the information in the event itself. Uh, so to take a look at this, um, I'm going to run uh, this run diagnostics <clears throat> custom action in PagerDuty. And this is actually sending a webhook to this uh, PagerDuty custom actions webhook endpoint. Um, and then it's going to come into the rule sets for matching. Uh, and it won't match this because the webhook name doesn't match run restart. Uh, it'll come through to run diagnostics. Uh, and this will match. And then this will, will get targeted for execution. Here we pull the PagerDuty incident ID out of the event and pass it through as a job option. And then Rundeck is able to use this in that job to post information back to the PagerDuty incident. As a note with the link to that execution. And uh, that's pretty much the, the gist of it. So the, the enterprise uh, version of this <coughs> uh, run job plugin uh, introduces these rule sets um, along with a batch key that you can use to pull out lists from the event that gets posted and treat each event uh, or treat each item in the list uh, as an event that will go through the rule set. Um, this is sort of important with PagerDuty integration <coughs> because PagerDuty can uh, batch uh, webhooks. So if it's generating multiple within a short period of time, um, it will send them through um, in the messages list inside the event. Uh, so this allows us to <clears throat> parse each one individually and run it through the rule set. Greg, we had one question. When PagerDuty is posting that the webhook with the data rate, is there any response from about the job and whether it ran that goes back to PagerDuty? Yep, so um, <clears throat> when we received the event, uh, we just sent back a, a 200 OK um, to, to say that you know we got the, the web request. Uh, but then we do uh, pull out the incident ID um, and pass it through to the job. Uh, so then the job is able to, as a job step, um, then post information back to PagerDuty uh, related to the incident. I can show this real quick how that's set up inside the job. Um, this will we'll take a look at restart web app, which does the, the same thing. Um, so there's a, a PD incident ID job option. Um, and then we pass that through from the event data that comes through. Uh, and we have at the beginning and at the end of this job, um, a PagerDuty step, uh, which is an enterprise to uh, update the incident with a note. Um, and then in the note, we um, use the job URL um, variable substitution. Uh, and then what that looks like in here uh, is right here. So it'll, it'll post the, the note then with the URL back to the execution. Um, and then when it's finished, uh, it'll post an update saying it's finished and it'll also include um, a job URL. Uh, so by pulling out the uh, <clears throat> relevant IDs, and passing them through as job options. You have the ability within the job workflow steps to uh, update or write back to page duty incidents. Yeah, and you're not limited, right? On You could post anything back that you wanted from the job. So it's not just things that you captured, right, on the incoming, if you had details uh, about the nodes that it executed on or anything like that, you, you could actually post that as well. Right, so within the, within the step, you, you could use um, information from the uh, workflow job context uh, and pass, post that back to PagerDuty as well. Um, and in fact, uh, when the incident was opened, um, we, we passed through a, quite a bit of information about the job that created the incident in the first place. Um, and so you'd be able to use um, similar variable substitutions when you're updating incidents and including information that was generated during the job execution. Well, we do have another question. Has this been tested with other monitoring incident management tools other than PagerDuty? The, the flexibility in the enterprise uh, webhook plugin, the advanced run job, uh, should be adequate to communicate with any webhook source that's not um, doing something funky, um, like with the request signing and stuff. So if it doesn't 
uh, require some custom uh, like authentication or, or message validation, then it, it should be able to work with it. it it's not limiting to monitoring and incident management either, right? Um, so we had kind of talked about some other use cases such as with uh, GitHub, right? So GitHub could post information and, and be able to maybe kick off a job that rebuilds and deploys um, right, a new version of something once. Can you talk about that use case a little? Maybe sure. with some other provisioning tools and stuff that could interact in this way. Sure, yeah. Um, GitHub is uh, definitely uh, a place where you would be able to use this feature. You can uh, set up a webhook and run deck and then go uh, take that URL, put it inside GitHub and subscribe to whichever actions in GitHub you want it to respond to. And then GitHub's gonna fire off a request uh, or a post to that webhook uh, whenever you have something happen in GitHub. And um, you can respond automatically to issues. You could respond to push um, pull requests, you know, basically whatever you want. Uh, works well in GitHub, works with GitLab. Um, I've also used it with uh, AWS SNS. So um, you can have AWS post uh, from an SNS topic uh, to the webhooks and uh, that works pretty well too. And an another um, service is Datadog that's on our radar. Um, we use Rundeck internally to um, do provisioning for our test drives service. Um, and we're planning on, uh, and we use Datadog to, to monitor and alert um, on what's going on there. So we're planning on um, wiring that up uh, internally so that we can get uh, alert events into that system from Datadog. We have another question in the Q&A. So I'm going to read the question directly. Are these inbound webhook variables exposed to jobs in case we need to capture them as context variables for variables for other job references or did they only work in the webhook context? So you can pass the variables uh, just like uh, any other job option. Um, you can pull them out of your web request, put them as option in your parent job, and then they should flow down to your um, any child jobs you have. Uh, you can also pass, if you want, you could pass the entire raw uh, payload that you're getting from the webhook down to your job and uh, do some kind of custom processing that way as well. And I can show an example of that uh, real quick as well. Um, so I have this log webhook rule set up uh, and it's gonna pass into opt one um, the entire event. And if you reference the piece of the event that was an object and not like a, a string or a um, integer, it would serialize that as a JSON string and send it through as well. Um, so if I enable this uh, and then run a custom action uh, diagnostics and then oh uh, let's take a look here here it is uh, and then so within this job I actually use JQ uh, to format net color to it and the log output um, so in this way uh, you, you could pass in all or parts of the event uh, as JSON and then use uh, something like JQ uh, or one of the data log filters to pull bits into the context and, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then of course we had one question around security. Can you restrict where the web hooks are coming from? We don't have a, a feature for that built in at the moment. Uh, probably one of the best options would be to use uh, uh, like a firewall or, or reverse proxy right now to limit access to those endpoints to like, for instance, PagerDuty will publish their um, IP blocks for where their webhooks would be coming from. Uh, so while it's not built into the application at the moment, um, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to, to do that with Nginx or, or another uh, similar firewall. Thank you.